Hello everyone, meteorologist Jeremy Baker here. Hope you're having a good day. Welcome to Cloudy with a Chance of Learning, even though it's beautiful outside and sunny. Next to me is meteorologist Andrew Wilson, and big props to him for helping me uh, do this today. He's working the system, doing the graphics, so thank you, Andrew. No problem, Jeremy. Ready to, to do a little bit of learning today. This solar energy stuff, it's, uh, it's really fun and really interesting. So I'm really excited uh, to be able to uh, learn more about it, and, and we can talk about it a little bit, too. All right. Yes, important stuff, too, solar energy, definitely. Uh, and, of course, you can ask questions along the way. I might not get to all of your questions, but we'll try to get to this later if we miss them. Uh, of course, plenty of people saying hello. Bill Taylor is watching. That's excellent. My friend Susan from New York City. Hello, Zaylin and Zariah, Brianna and Audrey. Tanya McMeans is watching. Hey there, Tanya. Uh, Sandra, Sandra Sever Lewis. Hello from Addison, first grade at Founders Classical Academy. All right. Well, let's get into the solar stuff here. Let me put on my glasses so I can actually read and look like a professor. There we go. I'm now Professor Baker. So let's show the video of a solar panel. Let's pop that up, or solar panels. Which are the, there you go. I'm sure most of you have seen those before. Kids out there, let me know if you've seen them. Look, comment on Facebook here. So solar panels, they're rectangular shaped, and most of them are about five and a half feet by about three feet. So not quite as tall as me and half as wide. Um, so every solar panel is made up of something called a photovoltaic cell. Everyone say that with me. Photovoltaic. Andrew, can you say that too? Photovoltaic. It's a big word. Uh, I'll spell it out for you, too. It's P-H-O-T-O, -O, like photo. Voltaic is V-O-L-T-A-I-C. And what that means, that's the production of electric current when two substances are exposed to light. Very technical stuff right there. Uh, but these cells convert the sunlight that comes from the sun into energy. And how it does it, it uses silicon, boron, and phosphorus, three different elements from the periodic table, and there's a magnetic field created. And when a photon of sunlight, just you know, one particle of sunlight, which is a positive charge, knocks into an electron, that electron is then freed and attaches itself to wires that can be used as electricity. Hopefully everyone's following that along pretty well. Andrew, does that make sense? Yeah, it makes okay. sense to me. So, so basically the sunlight hits the solar panel and it turns it into like electricity at home like can light up your the light bulbs in your home right exactly yeah it can do all sorts of things with power i was actually going to get to that in just a second here um i think we have video of the sun we all know what the sun looks like but let's look at some cool video of the sun yeah you mean uh is it there oh no um the one oh maybe i didn't send it to you well, just look at the solar panels. <laughs> That's fine. We all know what the sun looks like. Uh, so the sun produces a ton of energy. And you see the sun, and you see the light, and you feel the heat. But all of that energy can be used to help us make power. Now, it's not only to heat the planet, but we can harness that sun's energy and use it to power our homes. We use it to run things like the dishwasher, things that Andrew was getting into. You can use it to run the TV, run the lights in our home, garage door openers, the refrigerator. That all important PS4. Do kids still play with PS4s? I think they do, yeah. A Nintendo Switch? I don't yeah. know. I haven't played video games in years. I have no idea. Fortnite, I know kids do that. So you need that power for Fortnite, that's for sure. So it's very important to try to harness that power. And it's, it's out there for free, just for us. It's up for grabs, just for us to get. We just need the technology to get it. And that's where solar power comes in. Let me check uh, the comments here, see if anyone's asked any questions. I'll say hello to some people. Megan Massey's watching. From over there, I see her in the newsroom. <laughs> Hi, Brandy. Hi, Rebecca Schmidt. How are you doing over there in Pennsylvania? She's working from home, too. I've known her since I was a kid. Um, we went to school together for years and years. Uh, let's see. Hello, Nicole, Vera, Christina. Hello, Sydney from the third grade. I hope you're doing well and enjoying your time at home. I guess you're homeschooling. A lot of homeschooling right now. Joy Zaruba's watching. She makes some amazing murals for many businesses around San Antonio. Uh, how do solar panels actually work? Talked a little bit about that. We'll get to that again. Uh, let's see. Does it use work for lunar energy too? That's a good question. What do you think, Andrew? Lunar energy? I don't think so. Yeah, I, w I would say that it would uh, it would struggle alone. I know that we can get some light reflecting off of the moon, but I would right. believe that uh, that that would work. You know, I'm just going to Google lunar energy and just to see what comes up. How the moon can give us lunar energy? Full moon magic. This is something to look up for a future day. I'll have to take a look at this. 
but apparently there may be a way. Good question. And hello, Ariana. I know you're watching too. Uh, let's see. So how much energy can the sun give us? Now, let's take a look at that light bulb. Now, let's just say you have a 40-watt light bulb. What's a watt? <laughs> Watts a watt. It's a unit of energy or measure of energy. So if you're to take a bulb and make millions and billions and trillions and quadrillions and even more than that, what's after quadrillion? Quintillion? Sextillion, I think, is six, a whole lot. You, you do all that, you make all those bulbs, the sun would still have the ability to produce much more energy and wattage than all of those bulbs. So it just makes sense. If we could just grab that power from the sun, throw it into the solar panels, and use that as energy, we would be set for life. So that's why solar, our, solar power is so important. Uh, <clears throat> taking a look at the phone again here. For any questions you may have. Well, hello, Christopher from Kinder. I hope you're doing well today. It's a beautiful day outside. After this, go outside, enjoy the sunlight that we're talking about. So a lot of the energy from the sun bounces back off the atmosphere into space. And I did some research yesterday to find out how much. And it looks like about 174 quadrillion watts are wasted, go back out into space. But we can't do anything about that. So we just worry about the things we can control and the sunlight and the energy that we can harness ourselves. And there's plenty of that out there. Hello from Caleb, Camille, if I say your name wrong, I'm so sorry, Ayana, Jalisa, and Aubrey. Vera says, moonlight is just a reflection of the sun's light as it is not producing light itself. I don't think it would pick up much from the moonlight. I tend to agree with you. I'm going to have to look into that more, though. Hey, Mickey. Oh, I forgot to bring something. Mickey Shepard is a great friend of mine. She sent me in the mail today. She made me a tool belt. I'll, I'll post it on my Facebook when I get home. A tool belt with unicorns, and in each pocket, it was full of M&Ms. And she knows I like unicorns. She sent me three stuffed animal unicorns. <laughs> Too cra crazy, right there, Andrew? Oh, yeah. Andrew, Andrew loves unicorns. But thank, <laughs> thank you, Mickey, again. I already messaged you about that. Everyone loves unicorns. How can you not? They're so, they're so fun and pretty, even if they're not real. Uh, so let's talk about a sunny day in your backyard. How about a cute video of a dog? Let's look at that. Yeah, it's a puppy dog, and he's happy. How can you not smile looking at that? I just found that video. I thought, we're talking about backyards. Why not watch the puppy? Uh, so a lot of people have been spending time in their backyard since we're all stuck at home. Me too. This is the first time I've really gotten into this building in the last two weeks, actually. And I'm going to go right back home from here. Uh, I just bought a house. I'm learning how to take, your, take care of a yard still. I ended up stepping in fire ants the other day. <sighs> that was not fun. Wearing sandals. So I sprayed almost my entire yard with fire ant stuff, and I think it's safe now. Anyway, back to the solar. So if there are no clouds, about one square meter, which is a few feet by a few feet, so about the size of a really tiny kitty swimming pool, would get about one kilowatt or so of energy in a minute. So in the middle of the day, for six hours, and an area the size of that tiny little baby swimming pool, that would get about 288 kilowatts of energy. And that's about 10 times more energy than your entire family uses in one day. So imagine taking all that energy, grabbing it for free and using it, and what an incredible source of energy to have. And even if it's cloudy, you'd still get about 30 kilowatts of energy, so still enough to power your home for your family the entire day. So you could still do that, and you just have to figure out how to trap the energy the right way, and that is with solar panels. Going back to Facebook here. Does LED lights work on solar panels? I would have to say that's a no, right, Andrew? Um, I mean, I guess I guess solar panels could could power LED lights, but uh, I'm I'm not 100% sure on that. Yeah, I'll have to look into that too. You're asking a lot of great questions, things that I don't know that I will have to look up, and I'm typing that on my phone now so I remember because my memory um, is horrible. Uh, Susan, I would say that LED lights shining onto a solar panel, I, I wouldn't think that would work because mm -hmm. it. It's taking uh, energy from the sun uh, to, to power it. Yeah, it's taking all those elements I was talking about earlier, too. Boron and... Where are we here? Boron, phosphorus, silicon. I don't think get any of that from LED. Um, so, yeah, most likely I, I would say no. I'd agree with Andrew. Um, now, a wise man once asked me, on what part of the house should the solar panels go? Well, you want these panels to produce as much energy as possible, so you want to place them on the part of the roof that gets the most sunlight. So in what direction, it's typically in one direction, and what, I'm going to ask you guys this question, in what direction typically should solar panels face most often? So I'm going to give you a little time to think about it, and I want you to comment with your answer. So what direction should the solar panels face? North, south, 
east or west? And I'll see who gets the answer first right. North, south, east, or west? <laughs> Megan, do you have an answer over there? And, and what direction should most solar panels face? What part of the roof? And I think it would also depend on, on where you are, of course. I guess in here yeah. in South Texas, which direction should your solar panels face? Right. Okay, she's saying north. What do you think, Andrew? Well, I, yeah, I think it, I, it depends on your house. It of depends. Course. It depends on yeah. where your house is, and and uh, I would say to the south here in, in uh, South Texas. Uh, yeah, I would say uh, the most popular answer. Is someone did not say it on here, though. Uh, Susan says north. Rebecca says west. And oh, absolutely, Amy. It is a pleasure to do this. We love doing this. It's fun. It's something different, right? Uh, so the most popular answer, or the most often direction, is south followed closely by west. But of course, it depends where you live, what your house is like. If you have, like, I have a one story and neighbors on either side have a two story, so that changes where I can put my panels when I, whenever I get them. You know, they, they're getting solar panels and you can actually, your bill can go down to a negative amount if you have solar panels and you get the right amount of sunshine. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, we're gonna get to the money thing in just a second. Um, let's see, actually we'll do it now. So that's another thing, the cost. So solar panels, they can be pricey up front, but it really depends on the size of your system. But the average cost is about $20,000. It can range from $10,000 up to $50,000. But in the end, you end up saving an average of $75,000 in energy costs over time from that system. So it really pays for itself over the years. And so if you get solar, save that much energy, you could buy 75,000 shredded mini chicken quesadillas from Taco Bell. Uh, Maybe about uh, 7,500 cheesesteaks, Philly cheesesteaks. I'm from Philadelphia, I miss cheesesteaks. But the best cheesesteak I found here is Gino's Deli Stop and Buy on the northeast side. They're so good. So as soon as this coronavirus crisis is over, I'm gonna go buy like 10 of them. Uh, away from the food, what's your recommendation for a good cheesesteak place? Put it on Facebook and also ask some questions too. Where, where'd my questions go? Oh, there they are, okay. All right. So another great thing about solar power is that it's extremely clean. And in America, we use so many sources of power and it makes a lot of pollution. And we have a pollution video to pull up there too. Ugh, that's awful. Uh, so we use coal, that's a big one in the world and in America. And that puts a lot of pollution in the air, it makes it harder to breathe, makes it harder for our cars to function and it hurts our health. Gasoline is another one that creates pollution. Natural gas is another source of energy that you might use in your home to cook on your stove. I actually just got in my house a gas stove and I accidentally turned on the, the gas and didn't realize it. So I had to call CPS Energy and, and say, hey, can someone come out? I think there's a gas leak. And the guy walked into my house and, and five minutes later he said, uh, you turn that on. So now I've learned, watch the knobs on your oven. Uh, but back to solar, I keep getting sidetracked. But with solar power, there are zero greenhouse gas emissions. Greenhouse gases, they get trapped inside the atmosphere and if there's too much of it, it can cause our planet to heat up just like global warming. Now during this crisis though, fewer people are driving and pollution rates are actually a lot, lot lower. So that's one positive thing. I try to be a glass at half full kind of guy most times. Now with clean solar, that means if you're putting nothing between the ground and space, it's not going to change our weather. It's not going to change our climate, which is slowly warming. And that's something we're trying to stop or at least slow down. So taking that natural energy source, bringing it down to earth without creating any more pollution <coughs> is incredible. And it's something everyone needs to get on board with. It'd be great if everyone had solar panels. Now the best part about it is we can store it for later too. So if you have a whole bunch of sunny days, and then uh, come in a whole bunch of cloudy days, you can take that energy, store it in something that's like a battery, and we can use it when we need it, and it's right there, and it doesn't cost our environment one thing. So many positive aspects about solar energy. Um, and before we get some questions answered from CPS Energy, uh, another thing are solar farms. Um, I think we can go back to the video of the whole bunch of solar panels. Uh, there are several of them across San Antonio, and what they are, they're large-scale installations where Photovoltaic, there's that word again, panels or solar panels are other means of collecting social energy, like concentrating solar systems and they're used to harvest the sun's power. And these solar farms are also known as solar parks or solar power stations. And there's hundreds to thousands of solar panels that the city uses and CPS Energy uses to help keep down our energy costs. And they're just constantly building those up and up. Uh, so let me check out Facebook here, uh, let's see. Brianna would like to know how solar panels are made. That's a good, that's an entire another 
Facebook Live. I actually did a story about that on, gosh, when was that? Probably about five years ago about how solar panels are made. So if you Google Ken's Five, Jeremy Baker, solar panels made or something like that, you could find that story and then you can learn how they are made. Uh, yeah, make sure you get your roof inspected, Carl, before putting solar panels on it. Get someone to come out and take a look at your roof and get an estimate. You'll find out how much it will cost. They will give you everything that you need to know. Are solar panels hail resistant? Definitely not. That's another story I did. Uh, I don't know if you remember the hailstorm we had about hmm, four years ago. Hailstones the size of, of golf balls, baseballs, going through car windshields. That hailstorm destroyed tons of solar panels in one of those solar farms. And so if you Google, again, Ken's Five, Jeremy Baker, solar farm destruction or solar farm hailstorm, you can find that. So hail is definitely a big one when it comes to solar panels. That's where insurance comes in, definitely, because those panels are very expensive. So we have some questions that I asked CPS to answer for us. Uh, so why don't we get to the first one. It's, why is solar so important to San Antonio? So here comes the answer. Uh, you can use energy. Power is important for, uh, solar power is important for San Antonio uh, because it's a clean, abundant source of energy. Uh, you can use it to uh, power the appliances, the television, the laptops in your home. Uh, and again, it's, it's clean, it's abundant, and it's affordable. And that is Rick Luna from CPS Energy answering that question. Thank you so much, Rick. Uh, you know, Christy Smith had a good question. So after the solar panels are produced, they don't emit gases, but the machinery required to manufacture each panel does. Solar panel manufacturing requires the use of coal, oil, and other gas emitting resources, correct? Yeah, correct to a point. Each facility is different the way they produce solar panels. So I recommend Googling that story I did, Ken's Five, Jeremy Baker, Sol how are solar panels made? And I believe that was in there. Uh, I explained how they go from start to finish, the, the entire process. Um, and it's a pretty clean facility. Um, I'm forgetting the name of it exactly, the facility, but check out that story. The answer is right in there. If you touch a solar panel, will it burn you? They do get warm, especially in the summertime. So like any other surface, uh, you shouldn't touch it. It's just like touching... Um, you know, your, your grill, not your, well, the top, not, not the fire in your grill, the top of the grill, like the metal, or touching pavement outside, black pavement, that's pretty hot. So the same thing could happen, not like a crazy burn like you're putting your hand in fire, though. Uh, all right, next question for Rick Luna. Uh, he's going to tell us what community solar is. This is where you can't put, if you can't put panels on your roof, you have another option. So, so here's this answer. Uh, so com community solar is an option for customers who uh, don't want to have the solar system on their house uh, or, or maybe they rent uh, their, their apartment or their home. Uh, and so what you can do is buy systems uh, that are installed, uh, you know, for example, in parking lots uh, and own just a portion of that system. Uh, it's your own. Those are your panels and they pr produce energy for you just like they were installed on your house. These, a lot of them on carports, um, anything downtown, you might see them all, all around here and there. And you can just buy one solar panel if you want. So if you don't have the money for an entire solar system to spend 20000 or even $10,000, you can buy one solar panel much, much cheaper. And then you can actually get money off your bill once you buy that solar panel because CPS keeps an eye on that. Uh, I actually have more information about that here. I'm just going to pick up my paper. Uh, it's called Big Sun Solar. And solar panels, they're placed on areas, like he said, that are extremely sunny and hot, not on the roof of your home. So families can buy these panels. They're placed somewhere else. And all that energy is monitored by CPS. And it goes right into the power grid. Not only saves families money on their bill, which is also awesome, but it also helps out all of San Antonio by lowering the amount of electricity that needs to be used and generated. And that energy credit shows up right on your electric bill. So you can save money that way right there by buying a solar panel through their Big Sun Solar Program. Uh, another question we had for Rick. That's not a piece of paper with words on it. There we go. Uh, let's see. How much solar is in San Antonio? How about that, Rick? Uh, today, there's about 18,000 solar systems uh, on homes and businesses across San Antonio. Uh, that number continues to grow. Uh, we've seen the cost of solar uh, continue to come down. The technology has improved. Uh, and so we expect that that's going to continue to grow as more people uh, see solar around the community uh, and they decide to, to make the investment for themselves. All right. And hello to a few more people. Susan DeCento, Jasmine, Susan Heck, and Michael Cantania. I love Michael Cantania. He dresses so fabulously all the time. Um, so that's what I think about solar. Uh, oh, we have one more question for Rick. Kids, you're watching. 
If you think solar is so cool and your parents aren't around, Rick's going to tell us how you should convince them to look into solar and help our environment and help your family save money. So talk to your parents about solar. Uh, have them take a, take a look. Uh, you can go to our website to learn more at cpsenergy.com. And there you'll see the different options that we have uh, to help you uh, invest in solar and uh, see the benefits uh, for yourself. And solar is so great here in South Texas because we have so many sunny days. Not later on this week though, right Andrew? We're going to have some storms. Yeah, we've got, we've got a lot more rain in the forecast after today and uh, even the possibility for some stronger storms as we get into Friday. Fun stuff in the world of weather. It's going to keep him busy, that's for sure. Um, so that's everything we have about solar. Uh, you're absolutely welcome, Francis. Um, if you have any more questions, you can send them directly to me, jbaker at kens5.com, and I'd be happy to answer them for you. I'll answer those few questions that you asked that wasn't so sure about, so I'll take a look at some of those things there. Um, but that's it for today's Cloudy with a Chance of Learning. Tomorrow's topic, the upper level cap. What is that? Who's doing that one tomorrow? Bill, Bill Taylor. Meteorologist Bill Taylor doing that tomorrow. I had a feeling that would be Bill. The upper level cap. That's a Bill kind of topic. I can definitely see Bill doing that. And on Friday, fun time Friday, who's doing that one? That'll be uh, me and Bill. We, oh, okay. Uh, remember to send all the photos that you may have of, of any of the fun weather stuff that you all are doing right now. Uh, some of the drawings that you may be doing with these cloudy with a chance of learning topics. Uh, send them in to btaylor at kens5.com because on every Friday we're going to share some of those photos and some of those fun stories, your stories, your pictures, and also uh, Weather Chief Bill Taylor and I are also going to share some of our stories and some of our pictures of some of our weather experiences too. So remember to send those in. We'd love to share those with everybody on Friday. There are tons of weather stories to share too, aren't there? There are. There's tons. <laughs> I have too many hurricane stories. I, I wouldn't even get into those. All right, well, thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. Stay safe out there. Social distance. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.